Hi everyone, hi and welcome back to Professional Beauty Group's Upskill series. I'm Eve from um, Professional Beauty Group and our live session today is on how to create a salon social media plan that you actually have time for. And um, we hear so often from salon owners who say they just don't have time to create and implement a social plan. Um, often you're working on your own or you're busy on the salon floor. So this session is going to focus on how to be realistic in your goals on social and um, plan posts that will get you the best results. So today I'm joined by Debbie Lewis, who's a founder of Salon Socials and offers uh, social media coaching for beauty, spa and hair professionals. So hi, Debbie. Thanks for joining us again. Hi, Eve. Thanks so much for having me back. I really enjoyed our last session on Clubhouse. I'm looking forward to today's content. Fabulous. So as always, if you've got any questions for Debbie as we go along, then if you're watching with us here in the webinar platform, just type them into the chat box, which you should be able to see um, at the bottom of your screen or the Q&A box. Either will get through to us. And if you're watching on Facebook, on any of our Facebook channels, just type them in the comments and they will get through to us to answer live. And do type them as we go along. We want it to be interactive and, and get your questions answered. So yeah, I'm going to turn my camera off and let Debbie get going and I will come back in at the end for some questions. Lovely. Thanks, Eve. So the content that we're going to talk about today, I could literally talk about this for days on end. Uh, there is so much that you can be doing. And, and that's the irony when we talk about how to create a salon social media plan that you've actually got time for, delivering that content can still take days. So I'm going to do my very best to get it down uh, into a really usable chunk so that after today's session, you're going to feel empowered to go away and start making some changes um, that will really revolutionize the way that you are planning and preparing your social media so that you can focus on the other end of it, which is the analytics and, and what to do next, how to build, measure, and then learn. Um, so first of all, very quick introduction. As Eve said, my name's Debbie Lewis. You'll find me across all social media platforms as Mrs. D Lewis, uh, and my business that I'm representing today is Salon Socials. Um, so my background, 15 years as the owner of a chain of hair and beauty salons, uh, in Milton Keynes, which I sold three years ago. And since then, I've been focused on um, Salon Angels, which is recruitment training and events, uh, and Salon Socials, which is social media support specifically for the hair and beauty industry. So that's kind of why me, why am I here to talk to you? What are we going to cover in today's whistle stop session? There's going to be three key areas of focus. The first one, a whistle stop tour of strategy, so your plan. The second is about planning and preparation. We've got some very cheesy musical uh, memories for rocks and batching. And then we're gonna finish up with how do you repeat this um, to make it even more accessible and reusable. So that's what I'm gonna whip through in today's session. The first part of that strategy, I think sounds way scarier than it really is. I like personally, and when I was in business, when I had my chain of salons, I would have a strategy day every year, usually mid-November, um, to think about the coming year. So it would have been November 2020. I was thinking about the year 2021, regardless of lockdown, regardless of what my salon is doing, what my business is doing, I still need a wireframe, a sketch out of where I'm going. And if you've never had a strategy planning day or you've never thought about your goals and your visions for the year, I really recommend um, doing that before you start to sit down and think about your social media. It's a little bit like route planning. You get in the car, you set your sat nav, you get in your business planning mode and you wanna know what you wanna achieve. So the things you wanna consider is, is where do you wanna post? Which platforms do you want to be on? Because being across all of the platforms all of the time is a full-time job. What have you reasonably got time to be able to achieve in this coming year? When are you going to be posting? So is that seven times a week? Is that multiple times a day? Is that certain times of the day? So little tip from me, I always found that if you post naturally and organically uh, in between the ad breaks of, let's say, Love Island or um, any of the big well followed um, series, you get a massive spike in engagement because as soon as the TV flicks to an advert, people start scrolling on their phone. So it's thinking about when can you engage with your customer? 
Then we've got what? What sort of things do you want to talk about? So when I had my business, we did hair, beauty, barbering, spa, bridal, e-commerce, corporate visits. I couldn't talk about all those things all the time because it would become really confusing. So how am I going to kind of departmentalize all of this posting so I can be laser focused to speak directly to the, the target customer? How am I going to post? Is this going to be preloaded? So are you going to use something like Hootsuite or Planoly? Remember that all of those pre-scheduling tools are going to um, inhibit your natural reach and engagement. So it's planned is better than missed, but organically posted is best. So how are you going to be managing your time to get those postings at the right times for your customers to see them? Who's going to be involved? So are you going to use a graphic designer to come up with your templates or are you doing it yourself in something like Canva? Are you going to use the team? Um, the way that we did it is we got the team to do uh, what it essentially now is stories and reels. And we did those core content pieces uh, that were very in line with company brand, et cetera. And then your key thing to keep coming back to is why are you doing this? Why now? Why this platform? Why this message? Make sure everything you do is laser, laser focused. Otherwise, all you're going to end up with is a really confusing mashup of uh, imagery and wording. So um, within Salon Socials, we created a planner. It's a paper, a ring bound paper planner to help you plan for the year. And this is what we use. Obviously, there are a million planners available on the market. Ours is specifically for the hair and beauty industry. And I've taken just one page to show you what I would be doing next. So I mentioned that in November, I would do a bit of a sketch of the year. So for example, January, New Year, New You. February, Valentine's Day. March, Mother's Day. April, Easter and half term. And so it would continue for the whole year as a bit of an overview. So this is my March one um, that I, I might typically do this year, even during lockdown. My calendar focus is Mother's Day. Because they can't come into the salon, I'm going to talk to them about what they can do at home. So I'm going to focus on lymphatic drainage, facial massage, DIY style. Um, I'm going to be also talking about skin kits for gifting. So if you want to buy something for your mum, um, I'm going to do a deal of buy two, get one free. So you can buy one for you, your mother-in-law, and then get your mum's one free of charge, for example. I might make sure to include Zoom links for an educational event that I'm going to run where I'm going to sell tickets to come on and learn how to do it in a guided uh, fashion. And then I've got a little hashtag um, planning section there. So your town, uh, your custom hashtag. So ours at Salon Socials is Salons Get Social. And if you can bind those into all of your posts, it will just help you with a little bit of um, um, the, the way that people find you. So the planning that we did in November for the whole year is rough. And then every month we're going to niche that down. So here we are. This is what I'm going to do every single month. And this might take me one hour. So every month I'm going to take one hour. And I would be doing that at least a month before. So I'm not doing it on the 1st of March. I'm doing it sometime early in February. That gives me a chance to talk to my reps about product deals, to my team about upskilling um, and getting all of my graphics ready to be able to put onto the platform. So, so far I've done one day in November and an hour a month. Some people like to do these in 90 day plans. So they'll do January, February and March together and so on and so forth. So they'll do a 90 day plan four times in a year and that might be a half a day. But it's exactly the same time commitment as one hour a month. Hope that makes sense. Any questions on that, pop them in the chat. I'm happy to clarify. So once you've got your plan in place, once you know exactly what you're gonna be focused on, and we've been really, um, that time locking, it comes from when we were at school. You might remember, and I know this sounds a bit condescending, but bear with me. When we were at school, we had a timetable. And if we had maths between 10 and 11 every Monday, we blooming well turned up for it most of the time. We had our maths books, we'd done our homework if we were good, and we knew our mindset was focused for that maths session. I really believe we need to be taking those skills into our business planning. So for me, social media is planned on a Monday morning. 
Um, and I do that every single week religiously. And in fact, we meet, we have a Monday uh, marketing meetup every Monday lunchtime, a group of salon owners who get together and plan for the following week. And that's my dedicated social time. Now that is on top of the month planning and the annual wireframe planning. So strategy, planning, and then the action part. So my planning comes in three stages, but it is a religious, repetitive, rock in the diary kind of event. And this is super important because in the absence of motivation, you need discipline. And discipline more often than not comes from repetition. So if you can get yourself into some really good habits, become second nature. So we've talked a little bit about how you do your initial planning and that's your kind of ideas generation. The next bit are more um, skill-based tips. So how can you actually save time and be work smarter rather than harder when you're coming up with your actual physical content? The first way is to batch, batch baby, a bit like ice, ice baby, but batching. You'll see, I mentioned a moment ago about our Monday marketing meetup. Now, this is something that I like to put in my social media pretty much every week as a reminder that it's there. It will include the sign up details. Um, it will include all of my hashtags that are relating to um, salon social media education. Now, I've used a template in Canva to set this up. You'll see that I've got my branding so that you can tell at a glance who it is. Obviously, it's very small on your screen, but on an Instagram, it would be much bigger on the feed. And then once you click on it, I am able to curate some content, which again, I save in my notes or an Excel document. So I can just copy and paste it, but tweaking the content slightly, because remember, algorithms of the platforms don't like identical, um, identical duplicate content. They like an amount of variance. So even though you're going to save a template, you're going to switch up about 20, 25% of the wording to make it fresh and new. And you can do that across platforms as well if you don't like to duplicate uh, across all of the platforms. So Canva is an amazing tool. I thoroughly recommend investing uh, for the year in the professional version. And that will allow you to create templates, easily switch out your um, color schemes, save color schemes so that you're not always starting from zero. You're, you're able to save a lot of this, which a day of setting it up and then just minutes of tweaking. And at the bottom there, you can see our other business, Salon Angels. I'm using header templates where I'm just switching out the headline. And again, that takes seconds to create new posts once it's saved in Canva. Couple of other great tools for you. There's something called Dazzle. Dazzle, again, is a paid for, but reasonable. I think it's 20 or 30 pounds for the year. And it allows you to create um, animated versions of your posts. So they're a bit snazzier, they're a bit funkier. And, and as you probably know, the algorithms like interactive. So they like videos, they like animations, gives you more points. So Dazzle is worth the spend uh, if you've already been using Canva to the max. And then my other one would be InShot. InShot is great for helping you prep reels and videos. Um, and, and I think all of them have a free intro version, but it's definitely worth the pro um, subscription, particularly if you've got other people in the team that need the login to be able to help you. The second thing is rocks putting rocks in your diary. And this is replicable content that's got a slight twist. So you're probably really aware of Monday motivation. You'll see this, a lot of accounts will do motivational or mindset Mondays where they'll give a quote. And that's absolutely fine. As a standalone bit of content, it's not gonna make you a million sales but it's great for customer interaction. It's great for putting a little bit of extra content on the page aesthetically. Um, and it's also great for, I don't know whether you're aware that the customer buying journey has three stages. So first of all, we have awareness, then we have overcoming objections, and then we have the sale. And we spend a lot of our time down here in the sale portion, where we're trying to get people to book, trying to get people to buy, when actually they need 80% of this stuff 
and only 20% of the selling. So it helps us to balance out um, whether you're talking mindset, whether you're giving motivational quotes. Now on a Monday, we used to do Manicure Monday and we used to switch up between aftercare, gallery images, meet our nail technicians. So you can have all of those different angles, but still call it Manicure Monday. And you can create a template and then all you do is change the piece in the middle and the wording. So it's super, super easy to just batch and replicate. And where are you gonna put it in your plan? Every single Monday. For example, Testimonial Tuesday or Top Tip Tuesday or Transformation Tuesday. We always like these TTs and these MMs. Um, you decide what works for your business, but once you've found something that you like, it's really easy to sit down and plan 52 testimonials, 52 top tips. And if you do that and you plan it all at the beginning of the year in your quiet period, you've then got 52 lots of content to just take out and use later on. And this is what I am hugely advocating during lockdown, is if you were to create 52 Monday rocks, 52 Tuesday rocks, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and you were to create a whole year's worth of content, it's entirely up to you whether you plug it in as a pre-play um, using something like Hootsuite or Planoly, or if you save it all as drafts and then you load it organically. I always load organically, but posted is better than perfect. If you forget and you get busy, then it's better to use an API plugin and make sure that it's out there. And then all you've got to worry about is remembering your before and after pictures for your gallery. So you can create a whole year's worth of content right now in lockdown and then just tweak it during the year. If something doesn't feel right, adapt it. It's far easier to change it than it is to start again from scratch. The other thing that you can do is use awareness days and calendar trends. So you'll notice that across all of our beauty forums on the first of every month, I post a whole month's worth of trend days also available on the Salon Social's Facebook page. So this week, today is Singles Awareness Day. So if you don't know what you're going to post after Valentine's and you've finished all your offers and you think, oh, I don't know what I'm going to post. Well, you could focus on a single ladies day or single awareness or Gal Galentine's they were doing this year. Um, so Shrove, Shrove Tuesday, tomorrow, put in a little bit of content about pancakes. It might be last year's content that you're repurposing. They won't remember. And if they do, that's still okay. Um, so using these really clever days, I'm not suggesting you use every single one, but like breadcrumbs, sprinkle them everywhere in your planning to just mop up the gaps. And then finally, repetition. I've touched on it already. Um, you can repeat your content across the platforms. You can. It's not ideal. But let's face it, if you're a solopreneur, it's better to have content out there than it is to have radio silence. If you have been showing up and then you get busy, people notice that you're missing. And if you're missing, they're going to be entertained by people who are showing up. So I think it's better for you as a small business owner to repeat your content across all your platforms uh, that you've chosen. I do think it's better to focus on one, but if you've made a start on many, it's so easy now to link them across all platforms so that you're duplicating your content. What you might want to do is just go in and adapt it so that it's relevant. For example, removing your hashtags from LinkedIn, it only likes three. Removing your LinkedIn, uh, your, your hashtags from Facebook because it doesn't like those um, as, as a big batch like uh, Instagram does. So so having a bit of knowledge on all of the platforms will help you to optimize, but let's just get stuff out there and worry about perfecting it later. In terms of content, people very rarely see your content. Latest statistics uh, imply that less than 20% of your content is seen by your followers on Facebook. So with only one in five people seeing your message, you're pretty safe to repeat it every three or four months. 
without fail. So don't think that just because you've done your backstory, your meet the maker, um, that that's gone, keep bringing it back. But instead of reactively doing it because you don't know what you're gonna post today, plot it into your planner. Um, so we've covered repetition on platforms and content. I guess really the only other thing to say is to go back to that customer journey of awareness, overcoming objections, and then the sale. Make sure you've got a really nice spread of that content through your planning so that you're not always talking about buy this, book this, do this, uh, um, interact with this, comment on this. Sometimes people just want transient nice read that they can just click like to. Don't treat everybody like performing monkeys that have to just keep jumping through hoops. Don't obsess about your content is another thing. Um, it is better to be less frequent, but more consistent. So what I mean by that is it's better to post twice a week, um, every week, than it is to do 20 times in one week and then radio silence for a week, which we're all guilty of. So try to ensure that you're planning and you're prepping and you're batching and using the rocks in your diary, create a really even coverage. I would suggest focusing on one main platform. And for most of you, this will be acquiring customers on Instagram and nurturing them on Facebook. Um, so they would be the two that I would I would um, focus on, probably Instagram with it uploading to Facebook. Um, if you haven't got too much time. All of the ways in which we get clever with social media, so all of the ways in which as a business we try to hack, so pre-scheduling, um, copying, pasting hashtags, all of the platforms hate that because it's not true social behavior. Remember that social media is supposed to be sociable. You should be acting and performing like a human and a person, not a business. And if you want to perform like a business, they want you to pay. And that's why the algorithm has changed so much over the last few years is because these platforms become so crowded. It's so noisy with so many people posting so much content that they can't possibly show it all. So what they're now trying to do is create um, um, monetization, making you pay for ads and boosted content. Um, so try to behave as naturally and as normally as you possibly can as a human individual. And if you need to be using pre-scheduling tools and lots of rep, um, replication, so copy and paste, know that you will be slightly penalized for it, but posted is better than perfect is my mantra. Um, if you are interested in getting one of our planners, we're going to do a special offer for you for the rest of this month at £10 off. Just use the code UPSKILLS uh, and then it will take less than £20 of your money to get a year's worth of planner. So I'm sure there were hundreds of head scratches going on. That was an awful lot of content to get through. Eve, shall we go through the questions and see if anybody else has anything that they want to ask? Absolutely. Thank you, Debbie. That was a great overview. Really good. So we've had lots of, uh, lots of people <laughs> comments saying thank you. And um, we have had quite a few questions pop in already, but if anyone else has any questions, now's the time to get them in. Um, type them in the chat box if you're here in Zoom or in the comments over on Facebook and we will get to them. Um, but yeah, we had a question from Kerry who said, I don't find Canva that easy to use. Is there a good tutorial on how to use it? Do you know? I guess like all education, it's horses for courses. So I personally think Canva do good education tutorials. I do think if, if you go in and you want to learn it all, you're going to struggle. But if you go in and you just start with one, do that for a week and then try and learn one more new skill. I actually think going in and playing with it is the best way. But I realise that that's, that's time sensitive. Um, good tutorials for Canva. I tell you what, I will post a link on the chat after this is finished. Um, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I know there are many. Excellent. Thank you. So in the in the Facebook comments. Yes. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, another question we've had is from Christine, who said, why do Facebook and Instagram offer an opportunity to post both if it's advised to post different content to each? 
Uh, so remember that their end goal is that they want you to have to pay. So if they can tempt you, and this is not in a bad way, they're a business. Uh, and for years we were saying, how are they going to make money out of this? Well, now we know. Um, so if you link them, obviously Facebook own both portals. They Instagram and Facebook are the same company now. So they want content on both and they want people to stay on their platforms. So for them, it's a bonus if you post to both. But also if you start using that tool, they go, ah, this might be a business. Let's just mute what they're being shown or what, what they're showing so that then when they're disappointed with their results, they'll invest in ads and boosted posts. So that's how they monetize. You can fight against it. And that's called beating the algorithm. And that's a whole different webinar. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you. Um, and another question you've had is from Natasha. Who said, you mentioned about a calendar of events, but I've never been sure where to get a comprehensive list of event days, as there are so many now. Do you have any suggestions or what do you use? Um, so we use about 15 different websites to um, correlate one list that we think is appropriate for the hair and beauty industry. So my top tip to you would be on the first of every month, go to Salon Socials and we've done it for you. But if you do want to go out and find it, literally just Google calendar trend days or calendar social media awareness days and you will find them. What you do have to make sure you do is verify each one because some of them change from year to year. So what was, uh, pancake, well, not pancake day is a rubbish example. What was Women's Empowerment Day last year might have been the first Wednesday of the month. And so therefore this year, the date is different. So um, we verify ours, um, but just make sure if you're taking it from different sources that you are checking. Also, some are global, some are national um, and some are European. So again, just make sure you're getting a trend day that is relevant to your, your demographic, your audience. Thank you. And another question, Carly has asked, for a new business, would you recommend you need to have an active social presence before you launch? Good question. So I think that we have become really reliant on social media as our main form of marketing to launch and grow a business. I truly, truly believe that it should be one of many. We talk about um, touch points of trust. So if you're buying a supercar, you need far more touch points of trust than if you're buying a burger. And we are somewhere in the middle. So we're about seven touch points of trust. Um, if all you're doing is creating social media content, you're only getting one to three of those seven. So I, I really feel it needs to be part of a bigger marketing strategy. Um, there's no harm in doing a teaser and, and prep content ready for opening. Um, but there's no right or wrong. There genuinely is no right or wrong. I would hope that when you open a new business, you have already got a handful, if not more, of customers who are waiting to come in. And so therefore you're nurturing those people and building those relationships and strengthening those communications via social media. You're not using social media to try and buy those first customers. I think a lot of people make that mistake. Absolutely, thank you. And that kind of follows onto a question from Gemma who said, do you have any examples of posts that are good for actually getting bookings without being too much like an advert? Ah, so it's all part of that process I talked about, the buyer journey. It, so let me put this into a different context. If you were going to a speed dating event and you turned up at the speed dating event and the first person you spoke to, you said, I'd like to marry you chances are it's not going to go so well. And that's what we do on social media all the time. We go, oh, nice to meet you, buy my stuff, book in. And what we haven't done is taken them through those seven touch points of trust to move them from awareness, which is, oh, I know you exist, to overcoming objections. Oh, that's interesting. This might be good for me to finally, how do I now book in or buy? Um, so what's a great example of a post to get people to buy it's not a one-off it's all part of that journey so today on our Mon uh, monday marketing meetup we were talking about just this and one of the ladies was saying um what she was doing around uh, awareness and actually what she wasn't doing was closing her sale so she was telling everyone about how lovely the salon was and um 
kind of uh, statistics within the industry, but then she wasn't doing anything about getting them booked. So that call to action has to be there. But most of us go the other way. We just talk about, this is how you book. Jodie's got a gap at three. Um, and actually we need to spend more time in the other zone. Absolutely, warming people up. Um, a question from Tanya, is it wrong to use Google Images on Instagram? Oh, it, it's very dangerous. You don't have the rights to use that. Um, in Canva, all of the images within Canva are approved for um, public use. So you can use any of the imagery in Canva without any fear of repercussion. And there are a number of others. I personally only use those and then a paid for version. But I am aware of something called Pexels, P-E-X-E-L-S. Pexels, I believe they have a limited amount of images that you can use. It's called royalty free. So you can search royalty free images, which you can just use and they're free to use. But if you take an image uh, or even you steal it from somebody else's social media, it can be very expensive. Mm, absolutely. It's very dangerous practice. <laughs> So um, another, we've had a few questions over on Facebook. Someone has asked, um, do you have any tips for a prime time for Facebook Lives? Uh, again, this comes down to, we, we wanna start at this end, but we need to be further down this end to make the decision. So uh, a whole learning piece around customer discovery. So who are your target audience? Now, as a salon owner, it's really tempting to go, well, anyone can book in. We need to really niche down to your ideal target audience for that live. So let's say your live is around dermal fillers. We need to make sure that we consider the ideal uh, customer avatar who would be attending. So probably, and I'm really generalizing, um, probably it's somebody who works because they've got the money to be able to afford dermal fillers and they're slightly older. So potentially their children are gonna be slightly more grown. Um, so I would say after work time in the evening, seven, eight o'clock when they've done their dinner and they sit down with a glass of wine, maybe on a Friday night, glass of wine, I'm probably gonna find it easier to sell to them. So that's the psychology of a dermal filler client. And I've really generalized. So you you need to think about who you're attracting. So I mentioned earlier that we used to post, it was always lash extensions in the Love Island breaks on telly because we knew our target demographic were watching Love Island because they were talking about it in the salon. So we knew that if we did amazing pictures of our latest batch of hybrid lashes, we were gonna get inquiries because that's when they pick up their phone. So when do you do a live? When your customers are going to be on social media and that has never been harder to predict than during a pandemic. So, and, and think about the way you live your life. Um, I do Clubhouse every Sunday night at eight o'clock. But before Clubhouse, I would never have been on social media at eight o'clock on a Sunday night. So behaviours are changing. And if we have a birthday, we're not going to be there on that Sunday. And if we've got a, you know, a different occasion, we might not be there. So there is no hard and fast rule. You've just got to go with educated guesses. Uh, thank you. And um, someone else has asked on Facebook, what did you mean by being penalised for copy and paste? OK, so... Um, Duplicate content or non-original content um, is, so remember that all of the platforms have something called an algorithm, which is a machine learning tool, which is studying your behavior and the behavior of the people who interact with you. Um, what it doesn't like to see is entirely duplicated content. So if I posted today at nine o'clock in the morning and I did the same post at nine o'clock every Monday morning, it would stop showing it to people because it's, it's going, mm, this is a business. This is a business performing business uh, type activity. We're going to limit the reach um, of that post. So less people are going to see it. Therefore, less people are going to interact with it. So what's Debbie going to do as a result? Invest in ads and boosted posts. So it's just a strategy that you have to, uh, you have to beat the algorithm by playing its game. Uh, thank you. Um, a question from Suzanne, has, she's asked, do you have any tips to make images of my colour work look more professional rather than taken by my phone camera? Um, it's majority of it is lighting and positioning. Um, sometimes I get a really lucky shot and I think, oh, why can't they always be like that? Um, often the amazing imagery that you see uh, on adverts, for example, are um, super 
um, intensified by a graphic designer. Very, very rarely does um, printed um, hairdressing work, is, is it real, real colours? The ones that you see on people's Instagram where they've got it just right, they're usually using something like this, a light ring to um, illuminate. So I'm using it to illuminate me, to make my room a little bit brighter. You can see the colour in my hair much, much easier with the side with the light than you can the side without the light. So it's all about lighting and positioning. Um, and actually just find somebody in your team, if you've got a team who's super creative. I take the worst pictures. I am not good as a photographer. And yet one of our salon assistants with a Huawei phone, hers look like professional images. Some people have just got a great knack and I'm sure there's education that you can do to help you with that. Mm. And also often depends on the type of phone you have, as you say, <laughs> it can vary hugely. Yeah. And we've got another question put through from Philip. He said, have you ever paid for ads or boosting, or do you recommend that? In my salon business, no, genuinely never. Um, we had, if I posted a cancellation at 4 p.m., by 4.15, it was snapped up. We had such incredible organic behavior, um, but it took us 15 years and I live on social media. So I was constantly interacting. I was constantly doing all the things that, that these platforms love. And so we had, the perfect organic relationship. Do I now within this business? Yes. Um, yes, I have. And yes, I do. I do think you need an ad specialist. And, and I put my hand up, I am not an ad specialist. Um, so we have a team that we work with who do education around uh, paid ads. And I definitely think paying for your own ads and, and boosting is something you should really tread carefully with you can waste a lot of money doing it yourself if you don't know what you're doing uh, thank you and um, another question has just popped up on facebook from shanique who said is it more efficient oh, sorry it's just popped up is it more efficient to keep an online or written social media content planner Oh, personal preference. I am an old school pen and paper planner kind of girl. I love when I'm planning, I like to sit down with my highlighters, my ruler, my, I'd like to write in pencil. So that for me is the way that I best plan. Now, if you like a digital version, that's much cheaper, much tidier. Uh, but for me, I just don't work the same way with it. So again, there's no right or wrong. It's what works for you. Um, there are a lot of integrated platforms where you can do the planning and the creation online. Um, so if you do work well digitally, it, it, it is saving you yet more time. However, again, if you automatically upload it, even using Facebook's own creator studio, it will slightly punish you within the algorithm for that pre-scheduled content. Great, thank you. And another question from Carly, who's asked, what are your top tips for nurturing your clients without giving away too many services or discounts? Okay, so if we stop thinking about it as a salon and a sale and we think about it as two individuals how would you nurture a relationship on Facebook with somebody that you, let's say it's a you went drinking with your girlfriends and another girl joined the group what sort of things would you do to form a relationship well you'd interact with each other's posts so I would be commenting on her holiday snaps um, I would be if she posts a picture of a cake she's made I'd be saying and, and it's four words or more unique content they like so I'd be putting oh that looks really yummy with an emoji um, also you You've got, and we are going into the realms of beat the algorithm. This is a whole different subject area. Um, things like when you get the opportunity to leave um, an emotional reaction, instead of liking, if you go for wow or love, carries more algorithm points. So I, it, once you learn the algorithm and how you can manipulate it to get more points, it's essentially a snakes and ladders game that you are trying to win. Um, so how do you nurture the relationship? Be a good social citizen. Um, try to post to individual customers in with individual customers in mind rather than to everyone. Um, so I might be talking about uh, half term hair hacks this week. So if I'm talking about half term hair hacks, maybe it's how do you braid if your children are really overdue for a haircut, how can you now manage that super long Rapunzel hair with all the knotty ends? Maybe I'm talking about detangling. Maybe I'm talking about tangle angels. Um, so I would be thinking about that customer 
And then all of my messaging and all of my content would be to them. Um, and then I pivot. Next week, I'm doing a different campaign, a different focus area. Great, thank you. And a quick follow up question from Philip, who'd asked about the paid ads. He said, what sort of number of followers get you a good organic reach? To be honest, this has changed in the last couple of years. So it always used to be, and you'll have seen people paying and, and, and buying followers. These days, you are actually better to have less followers and more raving fans. So I would prefer to have a um, 100 super fan followers than a 1000 not interested Klingons. Because again, with the algorithm, it is rewarding you for the percentage of your audience who care. So if your audience is filled with people who live in another part of the world and, and actually all they're doing, they followed you for a competition and now they are never going to see you again because they, they have no interest in what you're doing. You are better off cutting them loose than having them as dormant followers. Um, in terms of a sweet spot, it varies on your price point. Um, so... Thinking back to when we had the salon accounts, we would interact regularly with 1500 uh, customers online. So 1500 was what was great for us, but three years have elapsed since then. And I had a male, female, multi-age bracket salon. So that's not gonna be the same demographic as somebody who just does nail extensions. So there is never a Bible or um, a, a handbook that says, tick this, do this, meet these criteria. It varies all the time. And whenever we've worked out the algorithm, they bloom and change it. Absolutely, absolutely. Which I think is why it's obviously also so important to monitor results from the posts that you're doing, isn't it, and, and adapt them. And we've had a, another question from Michael who says, do you think everyone in a salon should post or should you just have reception or the manager controlling the posts? So interestingly, one of the biggest challenges around that is um, reputational risk. So if people have access to your platform and then doesn't end so well, you've got a challenge, but also the potential of customers forming relationships with those members of the team who may then poach them to work uh, outside of your business. Now, obviously there are things that you should put in place to help um, minimize that. One of the salon groups that I've been working with recently, what they've done is they've created logins for each of their team members, which they control. So for example, their salon name um, as an email. So they've got their own personal email address at the salon. That is then set up as a login using all the salon branding. And that's their account that they use while they're at the salon. They don't own the content. They can't take it with them. They don't have, uh, they can change the password. The salon can change the password. I think that's a really nice way of doing it. It doesn't feel like a nice way of doing it because it sounds like you don't trust anyone, but it's a really safe way of doing it. And I think as many people in your team should get involved with social media as possible in an ideal world, because we are all such eclectic individuals. We buy from people. So the same people that like me and buy from me are not going to resonate with a 17 year old salon assistant and vice versa. We bring our own energy to it. Um, so as many people as possible, but in a really secure way. Great. Thank you. And another question is from Claire, who said, what do you think of the shops section on Facebook? So I've had my challenges with this. I think it depends. If you've got a fantastic e-commerce um, website and it, it integrates well with Facebook, it's a game changer. Every, it does everything itself. But again, you're telling it you're a business and it's going to reduce your reach and interaction. Um, so all of these things that are built to save you time and to be slicker for your business are also telling Facebook and Instagram that you're a business and therefore it will want you to pay. So swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. Excellent, thank you. Um, I know we're kind of running out of time, so um, maybe just one last question from Leslie, which is, should I follow back everyone who follows me on Instagram? Hell no. <laughs> um, <laughs> so for salon socials and for professional beauty, if we do a follow Friday um, and everybody that follows us who, who goes on there is great for us because we want to build up our network of professionals. 
However, if all of those people then followed you, you've now got 50, 150 other salons looking at your salon content. Why would they, it might be interesting, excuse me, so they might want to look at your nail colors, your nail art, your lashes, your trends, but probably they are going to, remember we talked about the percentage of your audience who's dormant, they're probably going to become that dormant audience, they're probably going to weigh down your reach and interaction. Um, so the only time that I think it's good to follow for follow is in a local forum. So maybe you've got a mum's group a follow for follow in a mums group if you are trying to attract mums local mums is perfect likewise if you're a barbers you might do a follow for follow with all your local tattooists men's suit shops um anything that's kind of male and local um and you can mix that up so something that is relevant for your business yes but industry follow for follow only if you're a b2b in the service industry Fabulous, thank you. We have had a few more questions pop through, but we are kind of running out of time. And a couple of people have asked about watching the session back or if they've missed certain parts of it. The session will be um, available to watch back over on our Facebook page. So for whichever channel you're following, Professional Beauty, Hairdressers Journal, Modern Barber, it's going to be on all, all those Facebook pages to watch back. Um, we've also had quite a lot of people ask about Clubhouse, which Debbie did do a session for us on before. So that is also over on uh, the Facebook pages to watch back. So if you do want to know a bit more about Clubhouse, check out that session. And um, yeah, so for now, thank you very much, Debbie. That's been fantastic. And loads and loads of great comments. My pleasure. Thank you so much for having me again. And I will try this evening to have a little look through and answer any that we've not been able to answer today. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. And thanks everyone for joining us. And we'll see you again soon for more PDF skills and age skills. Bye.